Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome in to another edition of another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Today's guest will, of course, be Coach Spurrier, brought to you by Meldon Law. We can't wait to talk to him about a lot of the stuff that went on this weekend. On Thursday, it'll be Ralph Russo, the sports editor for Associated Press, um, who knows college football better than anybody and also uh, is involved in the poll. He, he's a guy who does the AP poll. We'll talk to him. Uh, one thing we're going to try to do, I think we've got this set up pretty good, is on March 19th, which is a special day because it's my wife's birthday, just so you know, um, but she's going to be working anyway. <laughs> um, we're going to do a special show, and that'll be the Thursday show, but we'll go ahead and get it up as soon as uh, Zach gets it all ready. But we're going to have a panel, and we're going to do it all remotely, but we're going to have a panel, and it's going to be, I know... Um, Matt McCall is going to be, and I think Mark Wise said he would be on it, uh, and myself. And we're going to do, we're just going to talk about the NCAA tournament and what we think is going to happen and make our picks and go ahead and get that out because if you wait till Thursday to do it, you're watching games, right? Uh, it's kind of like what we went through with uh, football and everything. But anyway, so we're going to do that special one on the 19th, and that'll be a Tuesday, and look forward to that. Um, I love doing those kind of things, and those guys are great to talk to. Um, all right, let's get to our Process Service of Gainesville starting five, brought to you by Process Service of Gainesville, Scott Hart, and the good people over there. We appreciate them for being one of our main sponsors. And um, let's start with one, which was, man, what a bad Saturday it was, huh? Florida gets run-ruled in softball by Michigan. They lose another game where they screwed up. I mean, it's their fault for losing the game. Um and baseball lost as well. And you're thinking, but you know what? I, I kept telling my wife, the sun will come up tomorrow and there'll be new games to play. And they did. And guess what? They won They won the SEC in uh, gymnastics and won, won in baseball. We'll get to all those things in the morning in, in a minute. I, I do want to talk, though, about basketball and, and the loss there. It really is frustrating to watch them. I, I, when they teams go in this zone, now my theory on this, and it may be wrong, is that with about 10 minutes to go, teams go, okay, these guys, have, these guards are, are going to be a little bit worn out. We're going to be able to turn them over, so let's go to the zone then. Maybe I'm totally wrong. But, you know, Pullen and Clayton are playing so many minutes. Um, but anyway, whatever happened, it did not work. They turned the ball over a ton, eight times in the second half. And ended up blowing a game, another game where they had a 10-point lead. This is so familiar to me even though there are none of the players and none of the coaches are involved that were involved then. But it's very familiar of that run that Florida had. So it would have been, a, what, 10 through 12, I think? 2010 through 2000... No, 2011 through 2013. They played... Anyway, they played in three straight Elite Eights. In all three Elite Eights, they had a 10-point lead with 10 minutes to go and lost them all. And then finally... Got had the breakthrough in Memphis against Dayton and made the Final Four. And that team, by the time they got to the Final Four, was exhausted. But <laughs> they had nothing left, uh, especially Scotty Wilbekin. But my point is that I, I have seen this happen before uh, with the Florida team. And so it's it's not, like, unusual. The, the zone thing, look, there's a way – the way you beat the zone and, – and, uh, Todd Golden talked about this after the game, is you've got to be quicker with the passes on the ac- exterior up at the top and then get it in quicker and let the, the your guy in the middle th- decide what you're going to do. Maybe he's going to bounce pass to somebody. Maybe he's going to kick it back out and you get an open three. Whatever. But it's almost, they're so tentative. And it's I think it's just kind of the way, especially Walter Clayton plays, is that he gets the ball and then he starts looking to where... The, the hole is in the in the defense, but with a zone, the hole in the defense gets clogged up. Um, it, it's something they've got to figure out, or teams are going to play it a lot against them. And uh, like uh, Todd said, it's been an Achilles heel. I hate that it, that they lost that game because they um, played so well up to that point. And um, but here's the thing: they lose the game. They still are okay. They're fine. Uh, I know that uh, they 
ESPN still says they're a lock. I don't think they're a lock because I still think if you lose to Alabama, no shame in that. You're not going to go way down the net. But then you lose at Vandy, and then you lose the first game of the SEC tournament. I don't think you're getting in. I mean, I'm sorry. I think it's going to be close at, le- at the very least. But all you got to do is win one of those three games, and you're going to be fine, I, I would think. Um, of course, Florida's net. And this tells you about net, okay? All you need to know about net is that Florida's net uh, didn't drop when they when they lost to South Carolina because it was at South Carolina. South Carolina's didn't go up beating Florida. And South Carolina is still 13, I think it is, or maybe 12 spots behind Florida because they didn't play anybody in the non-conference. But who's a better team? I would say South Carolina is a better team. But there's also this to remember, guys. The, um, the NCAA tournament is not held at any home sites. Now, yes, are they held where teams play games? Not those teams aren't going to play there. Like, if they, they could have it, and they've had it before in Columbia, South Carolina, but uh, they're not playing in it. You know, they're, they're playing somewhere else. So um, – when you think about Florida's really toughest losses, not their worst losses, but their toughest losses at Alabama, at Texas A&M, at, um, they just played, uh, um, South Carolina. I went blank there for a minute. Um, you know, they, they, they've had some really tough, and, they, and they've, they've played well on the road, beating Kentucky, um, and having South Carolina and Alabama and, and um, um, Texas A&M pushed right to the brink and just couldn't pull it out. So there's nothing really wrong going on here. They've just got to get into the tournament, see what the matchup is, and figure out how to win that matchup. That's all they can do. Um, We'll see how it goes going forward here. Let's go to number two on our process service starting five, which is what happened with baseball. First of all, I got to be honest with you. I watched a lot of the Friday game. None of, no, I didn't watch any of Friday's game. That's right. Because I was at the Martin Fennelly tribute. Um, So I didn't watch any of Friday's game. Saturday, I watched when they got up in front and then kind of blew it off and and listened to a little bit of it later. Sunday, I didn't watch any of it. Uh, I was, I was, went out to the golf course and was going to play some golf. Um, so I don't know, and I, I, I'm looking forward to today's radio show where I can sit down with Jeff and go, so what was going on? But it, there was a lot of chippiness and it involved stealing signs or something. I got to find out and get all the details from it. Uh, but the coaches didn't shake hands. The teams did not shake hands at the end of it. Nobody likes it. Hey, it's okay if Florida hates Miami and Miami hates Florida. Miami hates Florida anyway. Let me tell you what. Florida has bigger rivalries in sports, but nobody hates Florida as much as Miami does. Nobody. And that's every sport. They hate it. Hate the Gators. And they've hated them forever. Uh, but the main thing is Florida got one, two out of three. Jack Caglione, what a great game he had. Here's a stat I looked up, and this is going to tell you how well he is doing right now. Now, he is, again, we're early in the season. It's 11 games in. But so far this year, he has four, um, he's only uh, had four walks, thrown four walks. I got to get this straight because he's a two-way player. He's he's thrown four walks, but he's, he's struck out 18 guys. So he's walked four, struck out 18. That's a great, um, exactly what you want. In fact, it's better than what you want for a, uh, a pitcher. But as a batter, he's only struck out four times and he's got eight walks and four homers. So these, all these numbers are great. This is the kind of numbers you put up over a season. You keep putting them up. You're going to be the golden spikes winner. You're going to win the big awards. Um, and he's done it Really well so far. Uh, obviously, Shelton has been really good too. Five homers already this year. And but in that game, Shell Nut um, actually was thrown out of the game for carrying his bat too far down the line after he hit a homer. And there's a new rule. Um, in fact, I was listening to Steve Russell talk about it today. That there there is an emphasis on 
not doing too much after a homer, not flipping the bat, especially at the opponent's dugout. And, be, you know, you got to be careful here. Hit the homer, drop the bat, celebrate, you know, do whatever you can. But I thought it got out of hand last year. Uh, really out of hand, so they're going to try to put an end to that. We'll see how it goes. But at any rate, Kevin O'Sullivan now 41-18 and 18 against Miami. I didn't think that, that number would ever happen. Um, and actually, Florida, I think, is only almost caught. I think they're one game, beh- uh, beh- um, one game under 500 lifetime against Miami now. And again, Miami pounded Florida for a long time there. But... Um, they're catching them. All right, let's turn now to SEC Gymnastics for number three on our process service of games with starting five. And congratulations go out to a, an SEC champ, the Florida Gators. Uh, got it done. Leanne Wong got it done at the end again. Um, uh, Anya Pilgrim with a 10 on the floor. Uh, tremendous job there. Um, and uh, Leon Wong also won the all-around. So uh, that's pretty good. In the and going against Kentucky now, Kentucky was number five going in, and Florida six. So I mean, this was a think about what Florida did. They beat LSU, who's number two, and Kentucky, who's number five, to win the SEC. It's how good the SEC is, and it's how good Florida is. What a job they've done with missing as many people as they have because of the Olympics. And of course, you lose Trinity Thomas. You're going to lose a Trinity Thomas. Eventually, she's got to leave school. Um, but, um, you lose people like that and you lose the cello who's getting ready for the Olympics. We'll be back next year. You lose one, one, probably your best recruit coming in who's getting ready for the Olympics. Anyway, my point is I, I am celebrating this ch- title. Believe me. I, um, I give them a lot of credit for getting that done. And number th- four on our process service of Gainesville starting five, uh, talk a little bit about softball. We haven't talked a lot about softball. They've been out of the out of home, I was going to say out of the country, but they were out of the state, uh, out in LA. And then they, of course they played their first tournament in, um, uh, uh, down at South Florida. Uh, but right now it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. They're 19 and three. That is a great record. We're getting ready to start conference play Alabama. Come well, That's going to be good. You know how good that's going to be. Um, but they've also got run ruled by Michigan. They've lost twice to Michigan now. Uh, but they also beat UCLA, which is a ranked team, on the road. So that's a good win. Uh, I'm still not sure about this team yet. Um, and you know that we talk about it all the time. Um, that, it, you know, it's the conference is so hard. Like in every sport that you're going to have to win, you're going to have to qualify for the NCAA tournament in the conference um, play because that's when you're going to build up your resume and your, I don't know if they have a net ranking of softball. Anyway, I I don't know uh, if I'm making my point, but maybe not. Um, The weird thing is Florida got run ruled and the pitchers were Ava Brown and Olivia Miller, who's thrown two perfect games and Ava Brown's their ace, both them freshmen, but they got run ruled. They gave 10 runs. That that was stunning, and it wasn't I, like I looked at the box score to see if they walked a bunch. No, they each walked one. They just got hit, double, single, double, single. You know, just got hit. It's the way it goes sometimes, uh, and you learn from your mistakes, right? But bottom line starts. In fact, I think it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday against Alabama. You know, I like the CC Network likes to do that, so. That'll be next weekend. That'll be fun to watch. Uh, finally, number five on our process service of Gainesville, starting five. Golly, it'd be nice to be able to come in here and not talk about the passing away of somebody, but we have to do it again. And the reason we keep doing it is people who we care a lot about, uh, we're losing them left and right. You know, we just talked about Martin Fennelly's celebration of life, which was great. But then to lose Chris Mortensen yesterday... Um, Mort was a friend of mine and, um, did a lot to help me in my career. Um, I kind of got thrown into the NFL beat and like an 83, 84, right in there. And, uh, Mort was on the beat for the AJC and, and he helped me out with a lot of things and, uh, introduced me to a lot of people. 
and every time I would see him, you know, we would, he would, we would just laugh about all the things we used to do together. Um, but obviously when he went to the NFL exclusively and started work for ESPN, I, I'd only see him about once, twice a year. And that was, and I call him every once in a while. Um, uh, but obviously when he got throat cancer, everybody was reaching out to him and unfortunately it took him and, um, cancer, man, it is just, it's ruined so many lives. And I wish there was something we more we could do about it. You know, I remember, I'll never forget this when, um, when uh, Bruce Edwards died of, of multiple sclerosis, uh, uh, we were at the Masters when he died, and Tom Watson came in and gave us real emotional discussion. He was like, damn this disease, and that's what you want to say about all diseases. And I do also understand this is what our setup is here on the earth, that there, you can't just have everybody live forever, right? I don't think that would be very, uh, we can get too crowded. Um but if you were gonna if you're gonna be Thanos and you were snapping your finger, you don't want to let Martin Fennelly and Chris Mortensen and uh, all the other really good people we have lost. It feels like we've lost lately. Go. Um, uh, it's just sad. There are other people I could snap off. Well, I'll give you the list <laughs> a little bit later. But Chris, uh, let me tell you what you and Martin are probably ar arguing right now over who's gonna write the lead on. Uh, when God ends the world, <laughs> um, or when he when he decides to have a rapture, or when he decides, eh, let, let's let everybody up into heaven. You're you're probably arguing over who's going to write the lead. Two of the best, and um, certainly Mort was an insider man. He very much like uh, Adam Schefter. I know Adam's doing um, some testimonials to him too. Uh, I'm getting a little emotional, so we better stop. Uh, Mort was a good friend and a good man, and I'm, I'm going to miss him as well. Let us take a break, and when we come back, we will um, we'll have Coach Spur. We'll talk to him, and then, of course, Robbie Andrew for Yes, No, We, or Maybe, and then we'll get into all of our other fun stuff. Uh, Adam's Ribco to Go, Gator of the Weekend, Leonardo's Quick Picks, Hester and Kipke, Three Things, Swamp Games of the Weekend as well. All that coming up on... Another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. I was driving behind a lady and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had 280 discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melden fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melvin Law right now. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FAPS. And he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. Need service? Call Process Service of Gainesville at 407 697 9592 or email shartgators, that's G A T R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Okay, welcome mm -hmm. back into another duly noted podcast brought to you by mm -hmm. Titan MRI from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. And of course, Melvin mm -hmm. Law also brings you Coach Spurrier every Monday. We love having him on the show. And that was certainly, mm -hmm. you know, it was funny. I was telling my wife Saturday, man, what a terrible day it was. Baseball loss, softball got run ruled by Michigan, mm -hmm. um, basketball <laughs> loss. And I go, but you know what? There's always tomorrow, and tomorrow there are more games going on. Sure enough, <clears throat> they did really well on, on Sunday, including, and I know how important mm -hmm. SEC titles are to you, mm -hmm. 
gymnastics yeah. winning the national or the SEC championship. Yeah, that was that was fun to watch. Uh, a freshman uh, gymnast. Uh, her name is uh, Pilgrim. And I, and I Anya, Pil Anya Pilgrim. Anya Pilgrim. Anya, yeah. She had a ten. Had a ten yeah. on the floor. That may have been the difference. I think we barely won by you know two or three tenths, whatever it was. But uh, Kentucky's very good, and we had to beat Kentucky to win it outright. So congratulations to Jenny Rowland and our Lady Gator gymnastic team for another SEC championship. They, they, they seem to win that just about every year. Well, I think it was eight years ago. I didn't even mm -hmm. know this. I was reading it in the story that eight years ago they went, they decided mm -hmm. instead of making it for mm -hmm. the at the tournament, mm -hmm. let's make it regular season or as the best record. Yeah. And Florida's won six of those. Mm -hmm. So what, however they try to change it, they're still going to win it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. There's a lot of good teams out there, though. Yeah, Kentucky has Kentucky's a team, really LSU, good, yeah. and so forth. But uh, that was good. And then, of course, our men's swimming team. We've run 12 in a row, yeah. the men have, yeah. SEC championships. But this year, uh, they scored more points than any men's team ever. So – Technically, you could say the Gator swim team this year is the best in SEC history. Yep, not not just could. school history, but SEC. So Coach Nesty certainly does a, oh, a beautiful job. You know, I heard him talking about this is our culture. This is what we do here. We win the SEC. Yeah, it's not like exactly. uh, we have rebuilding years. And of course, you have different uh, swimmers uh, all the time. So, yeah. But that was your culture, too. You I know. hope so. You, you, you tried yeah. to set that and get those yeah. guys to believe they could win it. Uh, yeah. And uh, some, uh, a guy did an article the other day, and I told him some of our football ills around here, such as uh, special teams organization, we haven't been very good, and uh, our defense is still 11th in the conference, which we got to get better. Penalties, a lot of careless penalties yeah. and so forth. Some people thought I was trying to be too, a little over negative. I wasn't trying to do that. I was trying to say that maybe, just maybe, once we get a lot of this stuff straightened out, uh, we can win eight, nine, ten games. I think we got the players here to do it. I really do. We got a bunch of new coaches. Will that help or not? We're, we're going to find out. But uh, we we could win uh, twice as many as predicted right now. I think we can get up to nine wins if. You know, we get our act together, and everybody plays right. as a team, and away exactly. we go. So, anyway. I, well, I, I think they I, have their best roster they've had under him. I know? think they are, too. Yeah. And it's just yeah. a matter of guys doing their job. Yeah, you know? they, they've got a lot of new players. And uh, hopefully uh, the organization and everything will be heading in the right direction. And uh, we, we got a chance. we got a chance for a real good team this year. Yeah, really absolutely. Think so. I, I agree with yep. you on that. And look at South Carolina men's basketball. They were picked 14th, That's bottom right. of the SEC. That's right. And they're one game shy of winning it. If uh, I think Tennessee loses Tennessee, Tuesday yeah. and they yeah. win, they, they'll tie for it. Yeah. Uh, SEC championship. So preseason predictions don't don't mean a lot. Everybody's got good players. Yeah. And now you got to coach the heck out of them. You got to have leadership. And, and, and with this portal, I mean that that mm -hmm. South Carolina team is basically built out yeah. of the portal. And yeah. One year. Especially with basketball, mm -hmm. you can really make it work in your direction. Now mm -hmm. you may get eight. Portal guys in there, and they don't get along, and it's not going to work. That's yeah, the risk you're that's taking. That's true with that. too. That but, is um, true too, and that's why it's important to balance your money out. I think right. if one or two guys are getting all the money, and the rest of the guys are getting virtually nothing much, it could cause some friction there. But that has a lot to do mm -hmm. with the culture you have, the mm -hmm. culture that you have built, mm -hmm. and that, and he's done that over three years. Lamont Paris mm -hmm. has only done it over two years. Um, other coaches. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the longer you're there, the mm -hmm. you would hope your culture is taking effect. But uh, you have to try mm -hmm. to get it going right away. You know, it's hard. Well, yeah, so. winning breeds more winning. Yeah, exactly. And uh, unfortunately, so does losing. That's one of Vince Lombardi's quotes. So, uh, yeah, we got, uh, you know, we got seven home games in football, like we always do, yeah. and one in Jacksonville and uh, four away. So if, uh, if we can get it together and uh, get some good leadership, and so forth throughout the team, uh, we, we can have a big year. Yeah, that's what I said about um, to somebody on a show the other day. I said, look, they got seven home games. Mm -hmm. If they can win all their home games and just steal a game or two on the road, mm -hmm. you're at nine wins. Now, I know the mm -hmm. schedule's difficult, but, you know, it's difficult for everybody. Mm -hmm. you know? What is uh, so unusual to me is that South Carolina 
when I got up there, the three biggest games in conference are Florida, Georgia, Tennessee. Yep. South Carolina does not play any of those teams this year. I know. Do you know that? I know. That's ridiculous. So, But that's why they do it. They yeah. divide it up. You know, they go play Texas A&M. Well, wait a minute. We used to play Tennessee all the time. I know. But that, that – Well, what they, they said they tried to do, and I think they did to a point, was to try to take – make the schedule – You it wouldn't be mm-hmm. top-heavy. It wouldn't be bottom-heavy. It would be mixed, you know, so the – you would get a couple of good teams mm-hmm. and a couple of not so good teams from from the last five years. I think they did they did mm-hmm. it mathematically. We, mm-hmm. And the, and yeah, everybody ends up. I mean, I think Kalen DeBoer's first game is against Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Alabama Georgia. Yeah, it'll be. Inter- what's going to be interesting about that Alabama situation is that his offensive coordinator stayed back right. with the Seahawks, right. uh, Seattle, and uh, I think it's DeBoer's offense. Uh, is he going to be the play caller or is he going? Bring a guy in and train him to be the play caller, so that that be the interesting part right there. I think. Yeah, they've there have been a lot of big story, stories breaking it. Like I get up these alerts on my phones. Alabama adds another coach, and I, I go, I don't, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really care that much. I care about what Florida's doing. Coaches hop around. They do. All the time, oh. the assistant coaches. Uh, some uh, coaches uh, are on a staff, and they get a chance to go to like Ohio State for like double the money. Right. As an analyst, not yeah. just as a coach, yeah. but uh, so titles nowadays, uh, I guess, don't mean quite as much as whatever you're making, whatever the salary is. Yeah. They, they never meant much to me before because I knew there was a lot of cases where a guy would say, look, I'll stay if you'll make me the assistant to the head coach or assistant or coordinator. Head coach or yeah. coordinator, running game coordinator, you know. Yeah, Stuff titles. Like that. But it wasn't fooling anybody, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> well, unfortunately, those titles help. Put you in a position to be a they head do. coach some days. Yeah, but yeah, they I, mm-hmm. they shouldn't. I don't think just because no, you shouldn't. have a title. But uh, but that, yeah, that's just the way that uh, game goes about trying to become a head coach and so forth. Yep. So uh, right. Florida South Carolina basketball obviously didn't get the mm-hmm. way Florida wanted it to go. But man, they had a lead. They, they it's just, it feels mm-hmm. like the same game being played over and over again where they get a big lead, they lose it. Sometimes mm-hmm. they come back. Sometimes they don't. You know those last ten minutes. Yeah, it does seem we play a lot of games like that, mm-hmm. a lot of close ones. But, uh, well, the tournament uh, coming up here, what, next weekend, I guess, or so? Uh, well, we got yeah. two more games and then the men's okay. tournament. The, but the women's tournament starts this week, Wednesday, I think mm-hmm. it does, yeah. Mm-hmm. Florida's playing Missouri so uh, in, the, in the women's tournament. Okay, yeah, we, so. we've beaten them yeah. before and so forth. Yeah, our women had a tough outing uh, this past week. They they but just uh, they they're another team just can't seem to finish teams off. They get they're right there in position and streaks, mm-hmm. and then just at the end, you know, I think what they lose by four or five uh, the other day, and mm-hmm. it seems like there's a lot of games like that with them. But yeah, that's uh, true. and then baseball taking two out of three. How about that for uh, Sully right now? His record against Miami all time, forty one and eighteen. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> it's is good. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, he's not Miami going still, to 11 uh, 1 like you did in, against Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> yeah, Miami is still a baseball a school. It, yeah. it, that's probably their best sport right now, I guess. Uh, although their basketball has been decent, hasn't it? But not. Uh, well, this year, they, they yeah, last year they got to the Final Four. Uh, uh, I think they might have played for the title. I'm that's to right. They did uh, get to. Yeah. Because it was ago. them yeah. and FAU and UConn, yeah. and I can't remember the fourth team. Yeah. San Two Diego South State. Florida schools. How about yeah. that? But yeah, this year, yeah. I don't know that, um, you know, um, that they're going to make it. Miami's going to make it. All their records, like, just right around 500. 500. Mm-hmm. FSU went and beat them, and FSU's right around 500. So it could be Florida. Florida Atlantic's probably going to have to win their tournament to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, but they could, Final obviously. Four. And then yeah. um, <laughs> USF's got a chance. But I don't know where, where that came from. They've had a they've got had a great season. They're like twenty two and four or something like so. that. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. even tell you who their coach is. <laughs> I can't. Even. No idea. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Uh, all the spring sports and everything kicking in. Softball and baseball kicking off. Uh, but yeah. basketball will be closing up here. March Madness and yep. tournaments will be going. And uh, it, the teams are all so close. I see. You know, two makes your threes. Makes your free throws, things like that, seems to win these games. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Got to do that. Mm-hmm. I did want to ask you about the uh, the Spurrier Award that we did mm-hmm. last week, a week ago, and I got to spend time with Mark Richt and mm-hmm. a little bit. And 
Um, obviously your family, which was great, and all the mm-hmm. celebrities that were here, which was really cool. We got a bunch of them on the radio too. Uh, but how did everything go for you? Oh, it was one of our best. Uh, every person I saw that was there said how they enjoyed the event. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Rick is a class, first yep. class guy, wonderful guy. And uh, our other coach, uh, Jamie Chadwell, uh, again, uh, excellent guy. And, and both the pl- freshman players that won, uh, Noah yeah. Fafita from Arizona and uh, the other kid from Purdue, uh, Theoman, uh I think his name is Dylan Theoman. Yep, Dylan. Safety. Yeah, we had him on the radio. Yeah. He was really good guy. But all of them got up and said yeah. the right things. You know, thank the Lord for giving them the ability to play. Thank their coaches, their school, their teammates, and all that. So it was sort of a good feel event. That, uh, And we had a bunch of ex-Gators, a bunch of my guys that yep, played uh, for up. me showed up. We were there. Uh, it was good to see Jason Odom there. Uh, you know, his son left. Uh, and went to play somewhere else up north. Opportunity to play, yeah. I think, start. He's probably wasn't going to get to play now. Yeah. yeah. So, but Jason, four-year starter, offensive tackle. And uh, oh, so many of our players, uh, Shane and Doug Johnson, my two QBs were there. And then, oh, I, I tell you what, uh, this Thursday night, Danny Worf was coming to town to he speak is, at right, the yeah. FCA. Uh, they're having a – annual event it's at the greenhouse church out in uh, north gainesville greenhouse church and uh, doug and danny and i and uh who's mother quarterback <laughs> doug shane. Danny, shane shane, yeah. shane uh you know what our record was in the 90s 90 through 99 these guys were our principal quarterbacks right. and of course shane played all three years danny had terry dean a little bit and Doug had uh, Noah uh, occasionally, and Jesse maybe played a game or two. You know what our SEC regular season SEC record regular with season these three record? quarterbacks? These um, three quarterbacks. I'm I'll gonna... tell you right now how many games it was. It was 78 games we played. I was going to go 70 or 68 and 10. 68 and 9, yeah. You're pretty doggone close. It was 69 and 9. No. Regular season SEC games, those guys were 69 and 9. Uh, of course, Danny, his overall was 34 and 2, uh, counting the SEC championship games and so forth. But that, that was really, when I looked at that, because a lot of people thought that Doug and his guys didn't do much, but uh, we had two 7 and 1 seasons. I know. Yeah. Uh, 99 and uh, uh, 98. 98 and 99. Yeah, I don't and think they SEC though. I yeah. don't think the yeah. fans were fair to Doug, but but he was following Danny, you know, and he was following mm-hmm. the guy who never did anything wrong, you know, and yeah, I think that was part well, of it. Yeah. When they look back, they they'll say, hey, he did pretty well. Of course, you know, we didn't uh, win an SEC those three years, but we finished like third, fourth, fifth in the country, uh, three of them uh, well, those last five. Hey, in '99, mm-hmm. if he doesn't mm-hmm. didn't get hurt his shoulder and couldn't, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember you put him in for like one play at the start of the second half and. He threw it right into the ground. His his arm was just mm-hmm. gone. He had, th- he had thrown but, it out. Yeah, they all had excellent excellent careers here, all three of those guys. So you yep. can come and take a picture with them and, uh, you know, uh, donate to the FCA. Yep. So we'll be there at 530 at Greenhouse Church, me and our three quarterbacks of the 90s, Sweet. Shane, Danny, and Doug Johnson. So uh, hopefully a bunch of Gators come out and get a picture and uh, listen to Danny Warfel. That'll be great. Uh, one thing we will mm-hmm. make sure we do today is do the Campus USA play of the weekend. And this guy is a picture I wouldn't mind getting a picture of. When that is Jack Caglione, there's his strikeout to give him 11 strikeouts, and then there is the bomb he hits. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If I've ever, if I've ever, I mean, Wilkerson was the best I've ever seen here, but he didn't just have the raw power like uh, Cags does. And to do it both ways, I mean, mm-hmm. Wilkerson was a guy who just battled you on the mound, and then he, he was a great hitter. Yeah. But this guy, the power is just unbelievable. Mm. That was down there, huh? Uh, yeah, down in yeah. Miami. Two yeah. out of three from them. Yeah. So I don't know if you uh, – now, did you play both ways in high school, baseball? Both ways? I mean, did you pitch sh- Shortstop hit? pitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We played <laughs> – we had about – let's see. We had about uh, – Nine of the 11 uh, that played the whole game. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. 
That's interesting. Nine, nine of 11. I've been in football. Yeah. There's only nine in baseball. <laughs> uh, seven of nine. Seven, seven of nine, of us, yeah. Yeah, I played about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I knew what you meant, yeah. All right. Well, you got anything else, Coach? No, that's about it for this week. Uh, hopefully, basketball uh, get a good win Tuesday night. Yep. Looking forward to that. senior night. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being there for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even. I can't even tell you which guys are going to get are going to walk because I don't know how many guys are going to stay. <laughs> yeah. Who's a senior? Who in? Who's a senior? Who's yeah. a junior? Who's whatever? Yeah. But we'll see how that goes. And certainly, yeah. this team has given us a lot. Yeah. Of, it's been a lot of fun to watch yeah. these guys. If they can just do a little bit better. Well, right at the end. For it, yeah. yeah. All mm -hmm. right. That that's right. going to do it for uh, Coach Spurrier's segment. We'll be take a break. We'll come back. Robbie Andrew will join us for yes, no way, or maybe. We got all our other mm -hmm. stuff to do as well on another duly noted podcast mm -hmm. presented by Titan MRI from the Melvin Law mm -hmm. Gator Studios. Mm -hmm. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com another duly noted podcast comes to you from the coach's podcast room at spurrier's good iron grill and celebration point you can watch and listen to us on facebook and youtube for every podcast that we do on mondays and fridays at two o'clock listen to the podcast whenever on apple Podcasts, spotify google podcasts overcast any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast brought to you by Titan MRI, as always, and of course, coming to you from the Melvin Law Gator Studios. Right now, we go to the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line and our special full house studios for Robbie Andrew to bring us. In. Hey, Pat. How, how was it going, going out? How was it going out there with uh, with uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. I'm I'm freaking out. Oh, John Stamos. <laughs> oh, I'm on the love boat now, Pat. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm so not in the full house. I'm on the love so, boat. It'll be your guest stars will be Gavin McLeod, Christy McNichol, um, one of the Arnezes. Yeah. Uh, I want Lauren one, Green on there too. One, one, one Osmond for sure will be on there. It's going to be a blast. Uh, oh, yeah. Robbie and I just uh, made a long trip uh, down to Tampa for uh, Martin Fennelly's um, farewell. And it was we. It was um, unbelievable, wasn't it? How how many people were there? I I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I was really stunned by that. Pat. I mean, there must have been four or five hundred people, maybe something like that. It was, and and the speeches were all great. And I thought our Chris Harry Gator Chris just knocked out of the park his tribute to uh, Martin Finley. I thought it was great. Well, mainly because he told funny stories, and that's, that's yeah. And he was very yeah. He was real good, and it was quick, and so yeah, he did. He was really good. He did a great job. It wasn't like Pugo not having any punchlines there. Yeah, you're right. He he had stories, <laughs> but no no closure on them. It was like, where are we going with this one? Yeah, but and, then we went, right, and then we went. And then we went to work. Was in the right place. Yeah. yeah. Then we sat down and wrote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Martin was a good man. Unfortunately, we lost another yeah. one, which I talked about earlier. And Chris Mortensen. I wanted to ask you, Robbie, about your memories of work working around Chris and being. Uh, 
friends with him. Well, mine, Pat, go back to the 80s when he would cover the Braves spring training. I would, too, down there for the Sun Sentinel. And, you know, he worked for the uh, AJC then. So we got right. to know each other pretty well. He was a real nice guy. Yeah, super guy. Helped me with, with yeah. the, uh, as I mentioned, with the uh, NFL. I, I mean, I got thrown into that beat. Didn't know anything about yeah. it. He helped me out a lot with it. Really good dude. All right. It is time for us to play Yes, Nowhere, maybe with Robbie Andrew. And, of course, we do that every Monday. Uh, it's brought to you by Big Mills Cheese Steak, Street Dining Done the Right Way. If you go in there and say you listened to it or watched it on YouTube, uh, you get free fries with your order. So go in there and do that. Free French fries. Can't beat them. Um, all right, Robbie, here we go on Yes, Nowhere, maybe. Number one, the SEC ends up with seven teams in the dance. I'm going to say yes, Pat. And, I mean, you know, you look at all the, the projections, I think that's going to be the, the number that gets in there. But, you know, the, some teams have to win some more games, and Florida might be one of those teams we're talking about now. So I think it's big that they, they've got to win one of the last two here and then win one in the tournament, I think. Well, Florida can't lose. They, they can't go 0-3. Or, you know, they can't no, they, lose. I don't think they can either. No, that would put yeah, them on the bubble. Lose their last four games, that would not be good. It, that You don't want to go in like that. And even, I mean, that means they may, if they can beat Alabama at home, great. That You're definitely in. You, even if oh, yeah. beating Vanderbilt at Vanderbilt, I think I think you're in. But uh, but the other teams that are uh, like the a lot of people these we're talking about the SEC getting nine in, and I'm like, well, Mississippi State hasn't done enough to get in. And, no, they're not there. No, and A and M every time they get into the one of those, oh, this is a big game for A and M as far as the the bubble goes. They always lose. So yeah, they flop. You're right, Pat. I don't. I, I, think, I think Florida. Florida needs to hope that nobody plays the one three one zone against them the rest of the way because they. They couldn't handle that at all the other day in the second half. It was unbelievable. No, um, I have a theory on it, but um, and I I talked about it before, but uh, it is I don't I don't know why teams don't play it more, but I think the idea is to wait until late in the game and when they get tired and they've been playing a lot of minutes, the yeah. two guards especially, and they get worn out and they don't they don't. They just don't have it at the end. Uh, maybe yeah, I don't as know. A, what... as, as a result, there are all those turnovers, Pat, from guys that usually don't turn the ball over, and they just didn't seem like they knew knew how to attack that defense. It was uh, ugly to see, ugly to watch. Yeah, wasn't good. Wasn't good at all. All right, let's get to number two on our uh, Big Mills cheesesteak. Yes, nowhere. Maybe Robbie. Golf watching season starts officially this week with the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I'll say yes on that, Pat, because so far I haven't really watched much of any golf, but I watched a little this weekend and just knowing Bay Hill is coming up and then after that the players. So I think it's time for golf season to start and for people like us to get, get interested and watch it now. So I haven't watched much yet, but now I'm going to start. Yeah, I, I mean, even though that tournament's at a course, I know, but uh, I just didn't – the guys that up there weren't that exciting. You know, yeah. McElroy had that blow up on 18 on – uh was that Sunday or Saturday? That was Saturday. Saturday, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and kind of blew himself up. And, yeah, but Tyson know. Alexander yeah. had a good tournament, Pat. He did. He did. So uh, but I'll be, he, I'll be excited to watch Bay Hill. I mean, I know that course really well. And, yeah, uh, me too. And then the players, obviously, we always look forward to that. Yeah, and they're right. not far off as the Masters. So it is. We're getting there. Not, all right. Uh, here is your final question on Yes, Nowhere, maybe brought to you by Big Mills Cheese Steak. The best thing about being retired, Robbie, for you is you never have to go to another combine. Uh, absolutely, yes, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that on the way either down or on the way back from Tampa in the car that we both covered the combine, but it, it's really not m much fun at all. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I covered it for, for Warfel. I don't even know if I saw the guy. Yeah, it it. I will say this: When I was there, it was great for content to get content, but it was a miserable yeah. day. You just sit oh, you, there all for day, hours, just standing out there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, uh, Johnny Manziel's in the room. Okay, now you got to get up there, and uh, it's just no fun. And you, and what a lot of people don't realize is we don't get to watch any of these guys working out. We don't get no, to watch no, them running in their like 40s. Yeah, it's not like We're, you're in the stadium watching all this. No, we're in the stadium, but we're in a room that's locked down where you can't even walk yeah. away. One bathroom. 
<laughs> yeah, it was no, torture. No it was torture, <laughs> Robbie, I'm telling you. Torture. It was, it was no right, fun. How we did it. Yeah, and then, then we would go out and, and have, have to eat on the company and everything, you know. Miserable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robbie, well, we that's going to do it for you. We'll let you go. Okay, Pat. Good talking to you, as always. All right. Thanks, man. Okay, well, thanks to Robbie for being on, as always. Uh, does a great job. And let's get to our Adams Rib Co. to go Gator of the Weekend. Boy, did I have a lot to choose from again. This is a great time of year, man. When you've got a lot to choose from. And you know who I decided to go with? I decided to go with Jenny Rowland, the Florida gymnastics coach, as our Gator of the Weekend. And the reason is what she's had to deal with. I talked about it earlier. You know, uh, you lose the maybe the greatest gymnasts to ever compete, uh, and you're and now hey, look, she played five years. She tumbled for five years. I get I she can't stay here forever. I get that, but to lose to cello, to lose the other uh, incoming freshman that you lost, you had uh, Leon Wong, Wong. There was Leanne Wong where well, there was a question of how much she would do and would she only do Olympic style stuff, and maybe that's helped because she is killing it. Um, but anyway. Uh, so that's what I'm, why I'm making Jenny Rowland the Gator of the Weekend because she has done a heck of a job with this team and winning another SEC championship. Great job, Jenny, and uh, she's such a good person too as well. Um, been on this show, which right makes her a good person, right? Um, and so she is our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the Weekend. Let's go to our Leonardo's at Millhopper quick picks. Give you an easy one, Tuesday night. Don't have much time to get it in. I know a lot of you are getting them in just at the nick of time. Uh, but you don't have a lot of time. It's a 7 o'clock game, but Florida, Alabama in Gainesville. Um, I'm not giving you a spread. Uh, look, it's a pick em game as far as I'm concerned. I don't know who's going to win. You just pick one, and you send it in to patrickdooley54 at gmail.com, and we're going to probably do another pull. I will say this. We'll probably do another pull. At the end of the SEC basketball tournament, which is only two weeks from now, right? So that probably that Monday we'll make a pull because I'm ready to give some stuff away. So get yours in as soon as possible. Uh, well, we've got to get it in by Tuesday at 7 o'clock. All right, let's get to our Hesser and Kipke. Three, three, three things. Hesser and Kipke is a Gainesville law firm specializing in the areas of family law and workers' compensation. I've never said those words before. I don't know why I would screw it up. If you're a loyal listener of this show, you know who we are by now. If not, the Google the firm, check out the reviews, and hear what our clients have to say. Ken and Jennifer can be reached 24-7 via call or text at 352-339-9920. Hesser and Kipke. I think I screwed up because I was trying to remember what Ken texted me this week. And I texted him back, but I can't remember, so I'm not going to look at my phone right now in the middle of the show. Anyway, Hester and Kipke, three things. Let's go. Let's start off with number one, which was Caitlin Clark breaking Pete Maravich's all-time scoring record. And I was wondering how I felt about it. Um, she's amazing. She does have a three-point line. She has a smaller ball. Pete didn't have a three-point line. But I will say this. Caitlin Clark is all about winning. Pete wasn't. Pete didn't care whether they won or lost. Gary Keller once told me the story, and this is why I don't like. I look. I saw Pete Maravich play. He was unbelievable. But it, he only cared about one thing, and that was scoring points. That's the only thing he cared about. Uh, they never went to the tournament. Um, but Gary Keller told me the story that Maravich told him. Look, he says. Give me a fake. I'll let you go by me. I just want the ball back. That's all I want. I want the ball back. So he got fake. He just goes, oh, and goes by him, gets a layup. Now now Pete's got the ball, and he's between his legs. Well, <laughs> the best you're going to do is tie, you know, two to two for that possession. But I don't know. I, I, it's not that big a deal. But, but you know, I, I, I do respect what Caitlin Clark has done because even though you can make those arguments – She's made people care about women's basketball more than they ever have. More than they ever have. It's not those ridiculous outfits that, what's her name, wears, blanking on her name, the uh, coach at LSU's son we hate. Uh, 
uh, what is her name? The coach at LSU. Uh, where's the weird oh, yeah, clothes? Susan, I, I can't name her name either. Uh, blanking on it. Anyway, it's not that. That's not how. That's not why women's basketball. It's not even because South Carolina is undefeated. It's because of Caitlin Clark, and she has brought people into the under the tent. Kim Mulkey. Kim Mulkey. Golly, I've said her name in in with in cuss words before, but I couldn't think of it. But my point is this, anyway, that Caitlin Clark has brought people under the tent, and that is what is important. And I think it's great, and people who want to badmouth her are just being misogynistic jerks, okay? I think it's great what she was able to do. Uh, let's get to number two on our process service. On our, I'm having struggles today. i got to be honest with you. It's, uh, it was a long weekend. On our Hester and Kipke, three things. Number two. Uh, this, I think, went right past everybody, and I didn't notice it until I accidentally stumbled upon it, that uh, Oklahoma's 71-game softball winning streak ended this weekend at uh, the hands of Louisiana. Now, Louisiana's got a good program. You know that uh, they beat Florida in the NCAA tournament one year um, in the uh, in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, they've been really good for a long time, and they were the team that did it. They beat Oklahoma, stopped their 71-game win streak. I don't know that I just thought it was important to bring it up. I don't think it's going to cost Oklahoma anything. Maybe it's because Jocelyn Erickson came to Florida and it's destroyed the chemistry of the team. I, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, finally, on our Hesser and Kipke, three things. Um, Mike Evans. A lot of people were wondering where he was going to go and it, it, now it's going to stay with the Bucks. Two-year deal, $52 million. Now, is he worth it? He's probably worth what they're paying people like that. I, are those people worth that kind of money when teachers make what they make and the guy tarring a roof makes what he makes? No. No, nobody should be making $52 million to play football, but that's what they're paying. So uh, I think he's worth it. The interesting thing will be what they do with Mayfield, assuming he comes back. He, I, I think he's declares for a free agent. I think it's next week he can declare for a free agent, free agency, whether he comes back. If he comes back, you know, that connection is still there. If it's Kyle Trask, which I hope it is, I mean, we'll see how that all works out. But anyway, that is uh, our Hesser and Kipke three things. Let's wrap it up. No more Pat Dooley story time because um, this that was the last one for Mike Jordan. I talked to Mike um, yesterday, actually, and we had a good camp conversation about the golf tournament and about um, – well, how much I appreciate him being a sponsor. But if anybody else wants to get in as a sponsor, it's not that expensive. Just give me a call and we'll work it out. Um, and I hate not to have stories. So I have got a great story I can tell you, but I can't tell you without a sponsor. I don't, I don't know if I'm putting the screws to everybody with that, but maybe I am. Let's, but I do have a sponsor for the games of the week, at, week, and that is the Swamp Restaurant where you can go there and get all kinds of great stuff. Uh, whether it's drink specials, the food is wonderful there. Love it. We were, we were talking about the swamp the other night, um, about Karen going there recently and having a blast. And I can't remember the context of the story. Karen took me out Saturday to downtown to some children's bars. And, uh, but obviously there weren't many young people in there. Because we were there at seven thirty, so. <laughs> but we 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 actually had a great time. We went to the arcade bar and places like that. It was good. We had a good time. All right, let's get back to our swamp games of the week, and we've got plenty of them coming up. Okay, here's the deal on baseball. Baseball plays FAU tomorrow night, Tuesday night. That's at six. It is on SEC Plus. Wednesday they play UCF. That is at six. It is on. SEC Plus. Of course, basketball, at the same time, 7 o'clock, it's not the same time, it's an hour later, they will be playing Alabama. It is on ESPN regular. Um, so, again, the two TVs, you don't have two, you don't have any TVs. Because if you're watching baseball and basketball, you're a happier person. And that's what I'll be doing. Um, and, well, not only that, but this will be much earlier, the women... Uh, in basketball, I talked. I mentioned that to Coach Spurrier. Play Missouri 
at 1.30 on Wednesday, and that's on the SEC Network. So, look, this, this women's team has been hard to stay with, but I've tried to stay with them uh, because they blow some – they blow way more leads than the men do, and that's saying a lot. Um, but let's see how they can get something done in the tournament. I, I will – I promise you I'll be watching it. That's just the way I am. Um and then, uh, and then the other thing I uh, I wanted to mention was the Arnold Palmer, which will be on TV all week and all weekend. And uh, it it is the beginning of golf watching season for me too, because I played the course many times, and um, love the course, love the course a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun, and that'll be on NBC all weekend and the Golf Channel. You can watch it there. I will go ahead and tell Pat do a story, okay? Just quickly because my friend Sam Dolson was there. One day, we decided we were going to go out. I had won a foursome at Arnold, at Bay Hill. And we were going to go, we were going to spring training games, and we had a room there too. And so we decided to go, and we played. And we're playing. Sam doesn't play golf. Yet he wrote for a, glo- a golf magazine, but he doesn't play a lot of golf. He doesn't really know all the rules yet. This is a long time ago too. I'll, I'll say it was about 20 years ago. But at some point, I look up and I see Sam driving right across the tee on the 17th hole. Oh, I'm like, God, I hope nobody sees him. And I look the other way, and here comes the pro at the golf course racing down on, on his golf cart. to, And he just starts laying into Sammy Dolson. And I step in. I go, dude, I'm sorry. He, he, we're, we're all sorry. He um, he didn't know the rules. I'll make sure it never happens again. He goes, do you know who lives in that condo right there? Arnold Palmer. What if he was looking out the window right then and saw you driving across his golf course tee? And I was like, he'd probably come down here and be yelling at me like you are. And I'm, I'm, but I said, we'll, we'll solve the problem and it will never happen again, I promise you. And it didn't happen again because I don't think I, I played with Sam anymore. <laughs> Certainly didn't take him to any nice courses. Sam's one of my best friends in the world. He's the guy who introduced me to my wife. So, But it's a funny story. Anyway, that's Pat Dooley's story time. Brought to you by, insert name here. How about that? And that'll do it for the show. Thanks to Zach for doing a great job again today. We appreciate him. We'll be back Thursday. Ralph Russo from the Associated Press, their college football editor. Uh, we'll have a great talk with him. Can't wait for that. Until then, I am Pat Dooley, I am deep, I am way back, and I am out of here.